get a little squirt bottle <coughs> and they put a goldfish in a um, I'll call the thing to order and start with a roll call, please. Mayor Weiss? Here. Deputy Mayor Feller? Here. Councilmember Rodriguez? Yes. Councilmember Kine? Here. Mr. Mullen? Yes, sir. In closed session to discuss item one on the agenda, labor negotiations involving the Oceanside Police Officers Association. Item two, uh, real property negotiations involving the city parking lot 26 on Myers Street, APN 147-350-016. Under negotiations are price and terms for the potential disposition of the property. Uh, the negotiating parties are City of Oceanside and Pelican Communities. Join the closed session. We will call this meeting of the Oceanside City Council to order and start with a roll call, please. Mayor Weiss? Here. Councilmember Rodriguez? Here. Councilmember Pine? Here. Deputy Mayor Summer? Here. Councilmember Sanchez? Here. If you will please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Mullen, for the closed session report, please. Thank you. The City Council met in closed session to discuss item one on the agenda conference with labor negotiator on the status of negotiations with the Oceanside Police Management Association. There is no action under the Brown Act under that item to report. The Council also met on item two, conference with real property negotiator. The property is the portion of parking lot number 26 located on Meyer Street. Negotiating parties, City of Oceanside and Pelican communities under negotiations of the price and terms for the potential sale of the property. There's no action to report on that item under the Brown Act tonight. Thank you. So that will go to our consent calendar, items 4 through 11. Do we have any speakers? We have one speaker on item number 10. We have a motion on the ballot. Motion is moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion approved, 5 0. And if you call the speaker on item 10. Our first speaker is Matt. Um, yes, hello. Thank you for having me. Um, are the engineers of the project available? There are issues, and we will respond to them accordingly. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to picture like what the traffic light's going to look like. Is it going to be? Is it going to be like a, a full stop always, or is it going to be like a continuous green tea? If those are your only, just go ahead and finish your comments, and then we'll have someone address them. Right. I would I would uh, suggest in favor of the continuous green tea. Uh, right now, the main road, the Rancho de la Oro, uh, four lanes. If you're coming from the cul de sac there, the community, um, San Ramon, uh, turning left, you do have to cross over the two uh, lanes into what I would consider the third lane. But that last, and what I'm calling the fourth lane, uh, could be unobstructed. So the arterial traffic could just keep moving, uh, kind of past that, that left turn. Uh, so to me, I would want to assist in the traffic light that's already kept that, that traffic moving. Thank you. I don't think you can. Our next speaker is... Go ahead. There is another speakers. speaker. Yeah. There is another speaker. Okay. Our next speaker is Jamie Thompson. Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon. Evening, now, I guess. Uh, we appreciate your uh, time on this issue. As you know, at this particular uh, intersection, there's been a fatality a few years back, numerous accidents, children that have almost been uh, uh, dismayed by uh, automobiles there. Um, and uh, to not uh, allow this would be a travesty. Uh, this uh, project was originally uh, supposed to be funded by a uh, commercial project that was coming in there. Uh, they were going to uh, put forth money for this. However, that project's been delayed for over 10 years, uh, and it's been now delayed for an additional three years. Um, due to the dangerous of nature of this intersection, a uh, signal really is needed and required. I understand that there's plans already done and developed for this spot. Uh, the bid needs just a, uh, a little bit more money, so we would ask that you do put forward that money out of the uh, request for that. Thank you very much. Is that it? That's it. Mr. Thomas, if you'd like to address those issues. Yes, Honorable Mayor. Uh, City Council Member, thank you very much. To, to address the concerns um, brought up by the first gentleman, uh, the traffic signals are going to be controlled by traffic loops, so it'll be a, a loop-based system at this point. Um, if there are additional um, concerns or comments, we're happy to meet with you to, to look at the, the changes that you're suggesting, because um, right now the, the action is to, to award the contract at this point. I'm sorry, what was that? I'm sorry. To award the contract at this Great. point. I'm sorry. Well, apologize for the, the frog in my throat tonight. So um, we, we can speak afterwards tonight and get the contract information. Thank you. Councilman Sanchez. Thank you. This um, has been long in planning. Yeah, there have been uh, some very serious accidents, including the fatality from, I don't think it was too long ago. So I know the residents um, in San Ramon supported uh, a thousand percent and um, there is a lot of traffic especially uh, for the for the high school there so I'm going to go ahead and move um, approval for the for this item and is it let me ask a question is, are there any um, do you have a sense of the time timeline for this it's read in the staff report uh, yes councilwoman Sanchez uh, Honorable Mayor and City Council, we're looking to have this completed by the end of the year. So you don't anticipate any problems at all? Um, no. Great. Unless there are issues with the manufacturing process, which we don't anticipate at this point. Fantastic. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Fowler. Thank you. Um, the, the looping system takes into consideration times of day and those kinds of things that uh, adjust with other um, stop lights up and down Rancho Del Oro and uh, so I, I think I, I understand what the first gentleman was speaking about and and um, you know that's for through traffic for the most part but I think he's uh, everybody's concerned about the safety there uh, especially when school's uh, in and when it's out uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I voted to get that project going, and uh, and that was at least 10 years ago. Um, so, but they're still on the hook for it when it does get developed by the funding from uh, the, our pre-funding this agreement. Is that correct? Deputy Mayor Feller, as far as I, I can recollect, that is correct. All right. Thank you. I have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion approved, 5-0. We'll go to item 12, which is the uh, quarter report by uh, Jay McPherson. Good evening, honorable mayor and council members. Jay McPherson, financial services director. I'm here to present the first quarter ending September 30, 2019, financial status report and as well as budget adjustments and transfers. Uh, we are submitting the preliminary first quarter report and recommend approval of the first quarter budget adjustments and transfers. 
keep in mind the first quarter there's not a lot happening, not a lot of revenues for property taxes come in. So we're at 12 percent. There's no concerns. We're on track and consistent with the prior year uh, at 12 percent. Here's some more details. Uh, we're at 2 percent. However, it should be noted we're up 10 percent over the same time prior year. So that's an indicator that we're continuing to see growth in our property. As more items come online, we're uh, seeing the increased revenues. Sales tax is 11 percent of budget. Uh, it doesn't include Measure X. We keep that in a separate fund. Um, it increased 34 percent from prior year actuals, so you have to be a little cautious. The sales tax office at the state level has been having some reporting problems, timing issues with their new software coming on board. So it'll flatten out, but we still are doing better than expected. Transient occupancy tax, we're at 11 percent of budget. It continues to increase for short-term rentals. We've seen some challenges with it flattening for motel-hotel business. Uh, you, know, you know, maybe more people are deciding to go to short-term rentals, but we continue to see growth as well. It's 3 percent up over last year's actual. Expenditures, we should be at 25 percent. We're at 23, so we're not spending when we don't have to, hopefully, and it's reflected into the 23 percent overall for the general fund expenditures. <clears throat> Here's a little information on the uh, Measure X. April 1st is when it was voted and became affected. I wasn't voted when it began. Uh, as of July 1st, we had a million dollars received. Uh, it depends on the same payment schedule that we get with sales tax. However, it should be noted that we are in line with our plans and budget. So the second quarter is usually our highest, and that's the second quarter on a calendar year, not on a fiscal year. Recommendation, uh, staff recommends that City Council approve the first quarter budget adjustments and transfers, and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Do we have any speakers? No speakers. Councilmember Sanchez? Thank you. Move adoption. Second Move approval Council. of uh, the adjustments and transfers. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I, I will second that. I just want to say that it's exciting when every time you come in and we're we're under uh, budgeting, if you will, uh, and, and it comes in higher than we expect. So thank you. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion approved. Five vote. Go to our general item, which is an ordinance regarding oversized vehicle parking on Hover Drive North. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Weiss, City Council members. Uh, I am Ted Chiffon, Harbor Manager, and tonight I am introducing an ordinance to establish parking rules for oversized vehicles on Harbor Drive North. Staff recommends that the City introduce an ordinance amending Chapter 29A, Article 5, Section 29A.51 of the Oceanside City Code relating to oversized vehicle parking on Harbor Drive North. As you are probably aware, oversized vehicles exceed 25 feet in length, 84 inches in width, or 84 inches in height. There's various um, safety issues regarding oversized vehicles on Harbor Drive North, uh, including corner site visibility, vehicle lane restriction, reduced visibility for pedestrian crossing, and as well as blocked visibil visibility of safety and traffic signs. If you will allow me, I'd like to spend just a little bit of time um, with this particular slide. 
That is the drawing of the harbor, and I'd like to point out currently what occurs with oversized parking on Harbor Drive North. Harbor Drive North on the inbound side currently allows for oversized vehicle parking um, anywhere on that inbound side, which would basically be the north or west or east side, the land side um, of the harbor. On the water side of the harbor, we currently restrict oversized vehicle parking. Uh, what we are proposing is that there be two areas that would allow for oversized vehicle parking. We don't want to completely restrict it. There's a need uh, for those vehicles to have parking at some places in the harbor. One area would be by the broiler, and one area would be on the north side of the harbor in this section right here. Currently, in this area here by the broiler, oversized vehicle parking is allowed on both sides, inbound and outbound side, which creates tremendous lane restriction in that area. What we are proposing, again, is just those two specific areas and not allowing 72 hours parking, but restricting it uh, to no parking between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. This is an example of what we see in the harbor on a regular basis, and this is exiting the broiler parking lot um, where you can see oversized vehicles parked on both sides. You really cannot see oncoming traffic. You can't see um, bicycles that travel this path. Also, if you look just a little bit past between the two, you'll see a, another important sign indicating that there's a, a pretty sharp turn. Um, and oftentimes, if this vehicle had been parked in that location, you would never have seen that sign. This is another example of lane restriction. Um, this is a current area where oversized vehicles are allowed to park on both sides of the drive. Um, we're proposing that they be parked on just the um, inbound side, um, allowing for a much wider lane so when bicycles use that path and vehicles are using it at the same time, it's not so restricted. Another example of oversized vehicle parking, um, we have a pedestrian crossing just past this vehicle that you see right here. This is by the fishing pier and by the restrooms. And as you see, as you approach it, which that's my vehicle, I'm less than 100 feet uh, from that crossing, it's only at about that point that you'll even see the pedestrian crossing. So it's another dangerous area that we're very concerned about. Another example of how oversized vehicles um, block some of our important signs. This is another pedestrian crossing sign. And just to point out, if this vehicle had been just another 15 feet forward, uh, you would never have seen this sign right here. So Harbor Drive currently has restrictions on the water side. Um, we're looking for additional restrictions on the inbound land side. We have sufficient parking in lot one, which is the triangular large parking lot on the east side of the railroad track. There's more than sufficient parking there for oversized vehicles. We also have overnight parking in lot 11B and lot 12, so we're not restricting um, oversized vehicles if they happen to be motorhomes to be able to spend several nights at the harbor. Limiting oversized vehicle parking to specific areas will increase safety for other vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians and it will allow for additional parking. Most of the oversized vehicles uh, that come into the harbor take up at least two regular car parking spaces, if not more. And the harbor is a, um, a pretty much a daily uh, visitor you know, attraction, so we do want people to be able to come and go um, with, with vehicles. We are going to allow for a variance for our slip permittees and commercial lessees if they happen to have an oversized vehicle and they're on their vessel, which they're allowed to spend three nights. We still want to be able to give them the opportunity uh, to spend nights in the harbor, so we would be able to do that through a special pass at the harbor office. That concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any speakers? No speakers. Councilman Sanchez. Thank you. The, uh, this was reviewed by the Harbor and Beaches uh, Advisory Committee, and it looks like they uh, approved the, um, the plan for directing the oversized uh, vehicle parking by unanimous vote. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, Council Member Sanchez, that's correct. By a seven to zero vote, they approved it. Okay. Well, then I move a, um, move that we introduce the ordinance. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez, second. Deputy Mayor Feller. Two things for, for um, in the prior slide it said slip renters, um, overnight um, stays, slip permittees. Is that uh, limo boards? Honorable Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Feller, um, limo boards um, have the ability to stay longer, obviously, but Harbor Drive North still has a 72-hour parking limitation for any vehicle, whether it's a car or an oversized vehicle. So we would still allow them to have that 72-hour in those specific areas if it happened to be a liveaboard. We have no liveaboards currently now that have an oversized vehicle that needs to park on Harbor Drive North. And the other question was uh, along the uh, fishing pier side there, you stated that, that that one large vehicle would have blocked that sign just a little further ahead. Um, is there is there a parking restriction there, there uh, going forward, or something that you're changing for large vehicles? Correct. Going forward, those areas would be restricted. There'd be no oversized parking in those particular areas. Only in the two areas that were marked in pink. Um, on this diagram right here. So I, I think I misunderstood what you were saying then. So there is no large vehicle parking anywhere but the pink areas. Correct. Thank you. On Harbor Drive North, correct. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. I need to introduce uh, uh, this is the uh, introduction of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Oceanside, California, amending Chapter 29A, Article 5, Section 29A.51 of the Oceanside City Code relating to oversized vehicular parking on Harbor Drive North. Please vote. Motion approved, 5 0. We'll go to item 15, um, communications from the public on all agenda items. Do we have any speakers? We have 18 speakers. Our first speaker is Suzanne Hume, to be followed by Judith Pineda, to be followed by Hannah Smith, to be followed by John Botworth. If you called your name, please come up to either one of the two uh, podiums, please. Suzanne Hume? Nope. Judith Pineda? Judith Panetta, and I'm on the Cleaners for Kids Youth Board. Today I'm here, I am here to genuinely ask you to not use artificial turf that has been placed at schools and athletic facilities around the country. For all the years I've been living on this earth, earth I had no idea that those little black dots that I've been playing with or playing on can be dangerous. Those little black dots are made of, of ground up tires from dump. They contain harmful contaminants such as benzene and lead and can release these harmful toxins in which we can inhale. Every single day, millions of children playing on playgrounds or on playing fields are, expo are exposed to these artificial turfs. I have no idea that they can contain carcinogens which are substances that are, that are capable of causing cancer in the living tissue. 